All newcomers start their journey with a health exam. Check tuberculosis X-ray. Maybe something happened before. Maybe she get fracture or something else. So we check it all. Today, it's Topan and Suzanne's turn. Suzanne sedated to minimize stress. Throat swabs, blood tests, a dental check, and even fingerprint impressions are mandatory. It's Topan's turn. But our goose decides immediately that it's too dangerous to sedate this little girl in her emaciated state. The more invasive tests can be delayed until she's a healthier weight. But she must get an X-ray today to rule out tuberculosis. We make it more important for tuberculosis because this is so dangerous for another orangutan in here. Any outbreak of this contagious disease would be a disaster in the close living quarters of these orphaned orangutans. Thankfully, Topan's lungs are clear. She can finish her tests when she gains some weight. In the meantime, all four newcomers will complete a four-week quarantine period. And once their health status is approved, they'll join the others. This is where the education formally begins. Each day starts with the school bus ride to their outdoor classrooms. The nursery school students are divided into two groups. The one to two-year-olds join the biggies, while those under one are in the littlies. In nursery class, the curriculum is simple. The surrogate mothers, known as babysitters, gently introduce their little students to the basics. Uh, baby sister, uh, tugasnya seperti ibu dan guru. Orangutans spend around 90% of their lives in the treetops. So you could say this is a necessity for becoming orangutan. On pre-release Bangamut Island, Vista teaches her five-month-old son V to climb by just hanging out in the canopy. But at jungle school, this is what happens. It's not perfect, but it seems to work. In Climbing 101, when the students are reluctant, their teachers will do whatever it takes to get them where they belong.
Report cards are marked every day. And like human kids, some are naturals. While for others, it's a real struggle. In junior school, two-year-old Malika is flunking climbing class. While her classmates practice, she prefers to watch. Malika was only a week old when she lost her mother to a forest fire. A village woman rescued her and raised her as if she were a human baby for a year and a half. She slept in a cot and wore baby onesies. It stands to reason that she's still struggling to be an orangutan. She must catch up or she'll be held back when the others graduate to the next class. Malika's not the only student failing to climb. However, Benny cannot claim a recent traumatic backstory as an excuse. He's been at school for three years now and has adopted a curriculum different to his friends. This is what he likes to do all day. followed by this. Then, some more of this. Well, that built up an appetite. His classmates Valentino, Eutrus and Madara are having fun in the trees above. Eventually, Benny seems to think he should join them. It's not that he doesn't know how to climb. The problem, because Benny really like a banana. It's really difficult for him because he's really fat. Oh my God. At over 60 pounds, he's twice as heavy as his classmates of the same age. and he hasn't yet learned to judge which branches can take his extra weight. No bananas for this scrawny little boy. If he doesn't figure it out soon, Benny risks falling behind, and he could be held back. Hey Love Nature fans, be sure to like and subscribe to catch all our wild animal stories. Get closer to nature right here on YouTube.